before I start today's retro bat in Duck Station, PlayStation, emulator setup guide for Windows PC. If you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too, for which I'm always really appreciative of. So can you believe it, people who's been subscribed to me some time now? I actually covered PlayStation well over a year back now, and at the time I did Medlefin. So today we're doing Duck Station, arguably the best form of emulation for the original PlayStation. So what are we going to need for this? We're going to need some BIOS files. Now let's just check which BIOS files we need. If you just pause just here, you'll see the BIOS files that I'm using for this. So everything there is in .bin, and these are exactly what Retrobat requires or what Duck Station requires. Now we're also going to need some games of course, now I've got Rayman, an absolute classic, and a launch release for the OG PlayStation, if I remember correctly. These are in .bin and .q, now these are normally the case for a lot of people, this is the games what you want. Now I'm going to show you a real cool way of turning these into something called a .chd. Let me show you how this works, what we're going to do is head over to this website and download chdman.zip. I'll leave the link in my description for this one. Once you've downloaded chdman, you're going to get a zip folder like I've got just here. Now, what you do with this to convert these to chd is open up your PlayStation game folder like I've just done. And what we're going to do is just copy and paste the two files here. So we got chdman.exe and we got qgdi iso to chd.bat. Literally copy and paste those or just copy them across into the same folder as your .bins and .q file. What we're going to do next then is just double left click on the .bat file here. And this is then going to open up a terminal and as we can see this is now compressing into what we can see here at the bottom a new file. This is .chd. So .chd is going to save you space and we no longer need all those irritating .bin files and Q file. Literally, the game is going to be put into one single file, which, like I say, it's going to save you space and it's going to get rid of that really annoyance of having all those files for a single game. Okie doke, so once the terminal is done what it's done, it's going to close down automatically. We've now got the chd file of Rayman. So, this is 365 megabytes, so it's easily saved around 150 to 200 megabyte, and it's the same game. Uh, so what we can do now is just drag out that game itself, and my Rayman folder, where all those .bins and .q was, just delete it. We no longer need that one. Okay, so what we're going to do next then, I've also done this for Tekken 3, as we can see, so I've got two games to test out for this video. We're going to go to the Retrobat shortcut, right click on it, open file location, and from here, we're going to go down to the ROMs folder and we're going to find PSX. So let's just scroll down. Here's PSX. Now I'm going to drag Rayman and my Tekken 3 games in CHD into that ROMs PSX folder. Next thing we need to do then is place the BIOS files in the correct folder. So we're going to go to BIOS folder. And you don't need to put these BIOS files in any of these folders here. They can just literally get placed loosely inside of the BIOS folder, just like I'm about to do here. So in they go. And what I'm going to do next then is open up Retrobat. Okay, so if you've done everything correctly, you should now see PlayStation. So if we go inside of here, let's just scrape some artwork first. If I press my start button on my controller, main menu, down to scraper, scraper settings. I'm going to just put everything here how I want it to download, including my account screen scraper details. If I then go down to scrape now. And here we go, so top right hand side you'll see scraping, and here we go, so scrape and finish, in main menu, game settings, update game list, and yes. And here we go then, so this doesn't look too good, so what I'm going to do is, if I press my start button outside of PlayStation, user interface settings, theme configuration, game list view style, well, I'm going to put this one down to carousel, and press B to come out, and back in the PlayStation, that looks a little bit better now. But anyways, what we are going to do then is go back in the PlayStation. If I press my select button, advanced system options, 
I'm going to make sure emulator is selected for duck station. If you keep this on to auto, it's going to select the next one down, which is Retro Arches Mednafem PSX HW. And as we know, I've already done that around a year ago, over a year ago. So keep this one on duck station. And of course, different emulators have different abilities to do various different things. So in Duck Station's case, like I say, Duck Station without a doubt is the best, if not the very best, PlayStation emulator around. So we're going to open up one of the games. And what it's going to say first of all is that emulator Duck Station is not installed. If we just press yes on this. And here we go. So it's now downloaded Duck Station. And what we're going to do is just press next on this part. Next up, it's going to ask us for our BIOS directory. So just here, its default location is going to be in our Retrobat Emulator's Duck Station BIOS folder. But we put them into a different folder. So we can go to Browse. And what I'm going to do is just find the directory of Retrobat, which is in my C drive. Okay, so once I'm in C drive, I'm going to find in my C drive Retrobat. And I put my PlayStation BIOS files in my BIOS folder. And this is all we need to do. So what we're going to do is just select this folder. So I'm just going to press refresh list. And once I've done that, if I then drop down NTSC Japan, I'm going to find my BIOS files here. So I'm going to press next. And just here, I'm going to just add in my PSX ROMs folder from Retrobat. So again, I'm going to go to my C drive. And if I scroll down, I'm going to find Retrobat. I'm going to go to my ROMs folder. And from the ROMs folder, I'm going to find PSX. If I just left click once on that in select folder and just press yes on this. And then we're going to go to next. We're going to keep everything here as default. So analog controller, press next and finish. Okay, here we go. So Rayman has now booted up using Duck Station. But as of now, my Xbox controller isn't working at all. So what I'm going to do is press escape on my keyboard. If I then use my Xbox controller to go down to settings, I'm then going to use my D-pads just to scroll across over to the controller icon. And for Xbox controller users, we're going to find an option here, enable expert input source. If I enable this one, we can now see in the top left controller expert zero connected. If I press B to come out, if I use my Xbox controller to scroll down the close game, and what we're going to do is exit without saving. Okay, so I'm going to press my select button, advanced system options. If I then go down to controls, I'm going to go down to force SDL driver and turn this one on to yes. If I then go back into my game, my controller is now working, whereas just a moment ago it wasn't working at all. So of course I'm going to choose English. Now, if you just notice, we'll see at the top, controller one switch to digital mode, and we can now see analog mode. What I'm doing here is pressing my Xbox button, and that's going to give us the ability to switch between digital and analog controllers. Okay, so you can actually change video settings within Duck Station Emulator itself, or if you press select button within PlayStation in Retrobat, Advanced System Options. So anyways, what we can do from here is go to Game Aspect Ratio. I can put this to stretch, but as it suggests, it will stretch, and some games will look pretty bad. If I go down to internal resolution, depending on the strength of your computer, we can push this up to 4K. I'm going to put this on the 6x 1440p, which is going to improve our visuals. If we go down to visual rendering, texture filter, I'm going to pop this one onto bilinear. Now, under visual rendering, we got shader, and from shader, we can apply scan lines from here. Let's just apply scan lines ABS. 
If I come out by pressing B and go into Tekken 3. Round one, fight! <laughs> And as we just seen just there, the game itself has now got scan lines. So if you want those scan line effects, it needs to be done with advanced settings here, visual rendering, and under shader like I've just done. Now, if we take this away, we can apply many different shaders. For example, we have got film grain. Uh, so some games are gonna look good. Some will look ridiculous with particular shaders used just here. Now we've also got an option here called multi sample. If I apply this, things are also going to look better. So if again, if you've got a lower end computer by playing around with these type of settings, your game might lag. So just start off with very modest settings. For example, I'm using four times MSAA here. Uh, we got more options here such as texture correction. Uh, just bear in mind that the more options you use, some games might appear broken if you use too many of these. So if your game becomes very odd looking, then just be mindful that by applying many of these video settings, particular games aren't going to look proper. So, uh, I'm also going to talk about drivers. Now, if you don't see any visuals at all or you get a black screen, if you go to drivers video, try changing this around. So, by auto, this is starting up with OpenGL. For me, it works fine. If you should have a game with a black screen, then try using a Vulkan or a different DirectX version. Now for games like Time Crisis where you might require a light gun, we got controls just here and if we go to sample player one controller type, you'll find gun con just here. If I was to apply this, this would apply for all games. So let's say for example, my Rayman game is actually a light gun game. But just to show you how this works, if I press my A button and keep it pressed down, this is going to open up options, video options and everything else, literally just for Rayman itself, the light gun game. If I go down to advanced game options and go to controls, player one controller type, I can then set this game up just for gun con, which is light gun of course. And say for example I got a game which is controlled by mouse, I can do this for mouse. And other gun setting, light gun settings, of course, under the guns option just here. So if we go to enable gun, you're going to want to turn this one on. We also got light gun crosshair sizes. Now, Duck Station also supports retro achievements nowadays. So if you want to earn some retro achievements, first of all, go to the retro achievements website and sign up. Once you've done that, go back to retro back main menu by pressing start, game settings, retro achievement settings and just make sure retro achievements is switched to on put in your username and your password and select different options there such as using hardcore mode and we'll also find within playstation itself if we go to advanced system options you'll find retro achievements hardcore mode is just here if that's what you want just make sure that one's turned on Okay, so if you want to add decorations to Duck Station, let's just go to decorations and make sure this one's on auto. If we just leave this with the video under driver set to OpenGL, your decoration isn't going to display. We need to put this one onto Vulcan. If I select Vulcan, come out and go back into my game. And here we go, we now got the decoration. And just remember, if you do want to use decorations, you need to set the aspect ratio to 4x3. Otherwise, most of the gameplay image is going to be taken away by the decorations. So I need to go back to view options, advanced system options, game aspect ratio. And I'm going to put this one on to 4x3. And if I then go back into the game, we should now have the decorations with the correct aspect ratio.
Now, if you find your hotkey isn't working or you can't exit Duck Station by pressing the escape key, this is an issue which comes up with a lot of Retrobat users. The way to exit it, literally the emulator, is just by pressing your Windows key. If I right click on the Duck Station icon, close window, and here we go, we're then back. And that's it for today's Retrobat and Duck Station setup guide for Windows PC. So, like I've been saying throughout the video, Duck Station is quite likely the best, if not the best, emulator for OG PlayStation games for various reasons. So you can do a lot more settings within Duck Station itself. I've just really covered the basics. You can even add texture packs through Duck Station too. But anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. If you're new to my channel, be sure to check out my Retrobat playlist. I'll leave the link in my description for my Retrobat playlist that'll be pinned. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, X, Instagram, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.